Well, colleagues, could I ask uh, people just to bow their heads for a minute, silence uh, for International Workers Memorial uh, Day. Thank you. Well, colleagues, thank you for uh, observing the minute silence. My name is Paul Novak. I'm the Deputy General Secretary uh, of the TUC. Uh, today is not a big day uh, for speeches, but I just want to make three uh, points before I hand over uh, to colleagues representing uh, bereaved families, people who have lost loved ones as a result of COVID-19 and uh, union colleagues um, as well. The first point is this. This is International Workers Memorial Day, and this is the day traditionally here in Britain but also around the world that we remember those people who lost their lives at work or as a result of work. Important to remember that we are an international movement, particularly when we think about the horrendous pressures facing our colleagues and friends in India and elsewhere uh, in the world today. But this year we are also uh, remembering those who lost their lives due to COVID-19. Tens of thousands of people in this country who lost their lives, 11,000 people uh, of working age, and it is right and proper uh, that we remember them today and on behalf of the TUC I want to send condolences to each and every one of those um, uh, 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 person who's been lost to their friends and to their family including to some of the bereaved families here um, today. Second point is that it's important to remember and I think this wall helps us to remember that these were not statistics, these were not faceless numbers, these were real people with real families and real lives. They were husbands and wives, brothers and sisters, friends and family, and each and every single person that we've lost during the last 12 months represents an individual uh, tragedy. And I think we have a responsibility on behalf of each and every single one of those people and on behalf of their family and friends to hold the government to account for the way that it's handled uh, uh, things during the pandemic and the way it's mishandled some things undoubtedly during the pandemic and that's why we're supporting the bereaved families in their quest for a public inquiry so that we can get to the bottom of things like the provision of protective equipment, uh, why the uh, pandemic had such a disproportionate impact on our black and ethnic minority uh, communities, why we haven't put in place still the financial support that people need to uh, self-isolate uh, and so many other issues that need to be addressed and the government must listen to the families and must listen uh, to those who've lost loved ones during the course of this year. Uh, my final point is that on International Workers Memorial Day, we don't just remember those that we've lost, we reaffirm our commitment to fight for the living as well. And that's why a public inquiry is important, because we want to learn from the mistakes of the last 12 months. We want to keep people safe in workplaces going forward, safe in their communities uh, going forward. And certainly I can put on uh, record the support, the reaffirmation from the TUC for that commitment to fight in every single workplace, in every community, to make sure that people can live with dignity uh, and with security and go into work each and every day knowing that they're going to be safe. That's all that I want to say. I'm going to hand over now to, to Matt uh, from the Breed families, somebody who, who suffered a personal loss uh, himself. Matt, over to you to tell your story. Thank you very much. Um, I'll apologise in advance, I'm not much of a public speaker, uh, so uh, I'm sorry in advance. Uh, my name's Matt. Um, back in March last year, my dad was one of the uh, people who uh, was infected with COVID-19. Um, he was a 56-year-old semi-retired design engineer who worked for Jaguar Land Rover. He was a man of incredible charisma. Um, he was a loving, caring family man. He was the centre of the whole world for me and my family. And we are still grieving quite seriously for him now. In the wake of his passing, I came into contact with somebody else who had also been bereaved, Joe Goodman. She had lost her father earlier on in the year. 
and we decided what we needed to do was to form a support community for people like us who had been bereaved uh, and then work towards making changes that will benefit um, everybody else in the future, not just now in this pandemic but in any sort of future event like it. A product of that has been this memorial wall, something that we put our very heart and soul into. It seems that a big part of grief is legacy, thinking about the people that we've lost and the impact they made on our lives. And uh, with that in mind, we decided that what we needed to do was memorialise them in a dignified fashion. This wall has about 150,000 individually drawn unique hearts to represent the 150,000 or so individual and unique people who have died as a result of the pandemic. It's very important for all of us that we remember not just that they were all individual people that we loved, but that the scale of that loss should never be experienced again in this sort of situation. It's very important to all of us that bereaved that that is something that is considered and respected and not least that many of the people that have died were frontline staff, people, key workers that were working throughout this pandemic and they needn't have died as much as anybody else shouldn't have. Thank you. I'm Christina McInerney and I'm the General Secretary of the Trade Union Unison um, and I'm here today to pay my respects to all of the people who've died uh, over the past year as a result of this dreadful virus but also to all the workers across the world who've died uh, in, the, in the course of their work or because of their work and International Workers Memorial Day is an incredibly important day in the trade union calendar because it does give us an opportunity <clears throat> to remember, to pay tribute, to learn the lessons and to call for uh, a decent future and safe working conditions for people at work. In my union we represent many of the <clears throat> workers who do essential jobs, particularly in the public sector, the care workers, the hospital workers and many the local government workers and, and many others. And we've lost many members, we've lost many activists through this pandemic. Uh, but I particularly want to pay tribute to the bereaved families today uh, because of the, their initiative. We've got this amazing tribute to people who've died as a result of COVID, one that will, will last, we hope, and one that means we never forget what happened. So uh, I'm very happy to be here today, albeit in these dreadful circumstances, and I want to thank them and the TUC for organising this. Thank you. <coughs> Well, hello everybody, my name's Len McCluskey, I'm General Secretary of UNITE. And you know, in some ways, words don't matter and are not needed. Because behind me, all I feel from this wall is love. The love of the families who've lost their dear fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers, friends and whose lives have been destroyed by a disease that none of us have ever experienced in our lifetime. And it's great credit to Matt and the campaign team for coming together in order to produce something of this nature. Anybody who walks this wall will feel not only the love, but the emotion that is there. And it's absolutely essential that we all come together. And certainly the TUC and Unison and Unite are committed to make certain that we have a permanent memorial in order to remind us of what's happened and so that we can learn the lessons. You know, talking of love and so much love here, it's difficult for other emotions to come through. But I have to say that I've walked this wall before and the emotion of anger comes to the forefront all the time for me because I wonder how many of the 150,000 who've died could have been saved 
if our government should have acted in the way that we pleaded with them at the outset. The lack of personal protective equipment was quite outrageous. I could tell you stories that would shame our nation. 150,000 deaths, one of the highest in the world. And in terms of per million capita, the highest. That's shameful for a nation that is rich in resources and should have responded a damn sight quicker. And I know the families and I want to thank them. Uh, Hannah and Tricia, travelling from Manchester, Matt from the Midlands, Leisha, all who've lost their fathers, who were all members of my union. And I want to thank them for their commitments. Their dads would be proud that they were standing here today to make certain that the lessons that we learn are absolutely critical in avoiding this type of situation again and also to answer the questions that are still unanswered and that is really what this campaign is about congratulations to the campaign this is about people power as always the only way to make those in power listen is when ordinary working people come together and when that happens when working people join hands across cities and nations anything is possible and I'm confident that we will achieve the justice that these good people, these great people are, are fighting for. You know, Paul and Christina have made the point that this is International Workers Memorial Day. There are millions of ordinary working people gathered right across the world today to come out with that slogan. It might be a slogan, but it's terribly important to remember the dead, but to fight for the living. And our fight is to make certain that these people are not forgotten. And I commend everybody who's involved in that fight, and I pledge my union to continue that fight until justice is achieved. Thank you. Well, thanks, Len. Thanks, Christina. Thanks, Matt. But most importantly, thanks to all the families represented here today. Um, I mean, that call for justice, a call for public inquiry is one that's got the TUC's absolute unequivocal uh, back in 100 uh, percent. And I hope that whatever the shenanigans going on across the water in the Palace of Westminster, that ministers listen to the families, listen to the breed and give them that public inquiry that they richly deserve. Thanks everybody that's joined us today, everybody that's watched us uh, on the stream and thanks above all to the families uh, represented here today. Thank you.